My name is Katrina Hull, Participation Development Partner, focusing on health, sport and connectivity at the Canal and River Trust. In today's presentation, I want to introduce wellbeing uh, and the role of the Canal and River Trust in this. Uh, I also want to highlight why wellbeing is important for the Trust, talk a little bit around the five ways to wellbeing, uh, with some examples on how the Trust can support the wellbeing of communities. Launched in 2012, the Canal and River Trust took over guardianship from British Waterways with the responsibility of caring for and securing the future of canals, rivers, reservoirs and docks in England and Wales. However, with an increasing body of evidence in support of the health and wellbeing benefits of accessing green and blue space, the Trust also made improving the wellbeing of, a, of the nation a priority. With a network of 2,000 miles of waterways, including towpaths, which offer largely flat, easy to use, free and accessible routes for all to enjoy, the Canal and River Trust are uniquely positioned to contribute towards providing a natural, sustainable solution to improve health and wellbeing. Through good physical design and well-planned interventions on the doorstep for almost 9 million people, the Trust has the potential to address wellbeing inequalities by providing social, cultural, economic and environmental benefits. Research highlights that spending time by water improves physical and mental health, and there is strong and consistent evidence for mental health and wellbeing benefits arising from exposure to natural environments, including reductions in psychological stress, fatigue, anxiety and depression. We know that spending time by water can make a difference to how people feel and support improved well-being through greater feelings of happiness, reduced anxiety and enabling people to reconnect with place. Research commissioned by the Trust in 2018 reported that all levels of waterways usage were associated with higher evaluative well-being. Furthermore, the benefits associated with waterways usage increased with the length of visit. This was reflected in higher levels of happiness and lower levels of anxiety for longer visits. For example, the association between happiness and spending over an hour at the waterway is around two times larger than spending between 15 to 30 minutes there. The benefits of access to the natural environment are not just cited by us. The role of the natural environment in regaining and retaining good health is highlighted in the government's 25 year environment plan. The plan recognises that by opening up the mental and physical health benefits of the natural world to people from the widest possible range of ages and backgrounds, there will be benefit for national wellbeing, health and economic prosperity. Furthermore, the National Plan and Policy Framework also states that access to a network of high quality open spaces and opportunities for sport and physical activity is important for health and wellbeing. The health and well-being of the communities and planning policies and decisions should aim to achieve healthy, inclusive and safe places. Our mental well-being affects how we feel about all areas of life and looking after it can really improve the way we feel every day. On the basis of this, the five ways to well-being was developed and published in the Foresight Report on mental capital and well-being in 2008. Having good mental health helps us relax more, achieve more and enjoy our lives more. And each of the five ways to well-being positively enhances well-being. Across all our work at the Canal and River Trust, there are six key themes of well-being which reflect the different roles of waterways and the wide range of activities happening on and around them. These include uh, health, well-being and happiness, which is all about using our waterways and towpaths for physical activity and places to relax and help improve well-being. Engaged people and cohesive communities is all about volunteering, participatory events, festivals and open days and all of the ways that we can engage with local people. Learning and enhancing skills is all about formal and informal education, which include apprenticeships and lifelong learning opportunities. 
Prosperous and connected places is about the recognition that waterways are part of the visitor economy and support leisure based boating activity. Many cities and towns have focused the regeneration around the waterways, adding value and creating great places to live alongside. Green and Blue Futures is about waterborne freight, walking and cycling as forms of travel to and from work and school, forming part of a sustainable transport network, helping to enhance connectivity and reduce congestion. Our water is also used as a source of renewable energy. Cultural and environmental assets is all about utilising our rich cultural heritage and environmental assets to provide opportunities to enhance well-being, as well as providing the platforms for many other outcomes. There are many ways you can prove your well-being through your local canal, and here are some examples. One option might be to connect with nature. Why not go for a nice walk along the towpath with a friend or take your dog for a walk and meet other dog lovers too. You could also connect digitally with people on social media and join into canal conversations on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. Why not keep learning? Research shows that learning new skills can improve your mental well-being. Find out more about the canal's rich history. Find out more about the environment and the waterway wildlife. And why not try to identify local birds by their songs? Why not get active at your local canal? Exercise makes us feel good and just a small amount has been shown to improve mental well-being. Why not go for a walk, jog or run along your local canal? Or get a different view of the canal by kayaking or paddle boarding? How about simply taking notice on your local canal? Count how many times you spot a certain bird or see a certain tree. Check to see if you can spot signs of the seasons changing. Or just sit and watch the world go by. And the final five way to well-being is all about giving. Giving to others is a great way to boost our well-being. Why not give your time? The canal is a great place to take a friend out for a walk. How about joining a community of volunteers to help keep your canal looking beautiful? I'd now like to highlight a few specific programmes of work provided by the Trust in order to help improve your well-being. Why not get the whole family involved and improve everyone's well-being as well as help in the environment by downloading a free Family Fun Plastics Challenge Pack? The pack contains lots of activities that you can do on your next visit to the waterways. And there's even a few ideas to try at home. Have you ever considered volunteering at the Trust? Volunteers are a valuable asset at the Canal and River Trust. And they help with all aspects of our work to bring canals to life. And with many roles available, there is something to suit everyone. As I highlighted previously, volunteering has a significant positive impact on your well-being. Not only will you meet like-minded people, you get to spend time outdoors and make a difference to local places. Why not explore someone new and enjoy relaxing waterside scenery from the comfort of your own home with some of our virtual walks? Of course, we encourage walking in the physical sense, either through group led walks that might be available across our network or self led walks. However, if that isn't possible right now, there are a number of virtual walks that can be accessed via our website. Some of our top virtual walks include Little Venice, where the Grand Union Canal meets the Regions Canal, Birmingham City Centre, and Foxton Locks, all of which can be viewed via our website. And finally, I'd like to highlight our Let's Fish programme. Every year between March and the end of October, supported by local angling clubs, we host hundreds of learn to fish taster events. They're suitable for anyone, whether you've never fished before or you're getting back into it after a break. This is a great way to relax and spend time in the fresh air with family or friends. And I'm going to leave you with a video 
showcase in the Let's Fish programme. Thank you for listening. Once again, many thanks for listening, and I hope you find this brief overview of wellbeing at the Canal and River Trust useful. For further information on our work, please visit our website at canalrivertrust.org.uk or for any specific questions regarding health and wellbeing, please feel free to email me directly.